time I've been there, I've only slept in, I feel, I think, I feel, feel like I've only slept there a total of two weeks, like 14 nights out of like 300 nights. Isn't there requirements that you have to be so many, otherwise you'll lose your spot? No, you just have to check in, you don't have to stay there. Oh, so you check in at least? Yeah, I go and get food so they know I'm still around. You don't like to sleep there? Well, I just, you can't have visitors, so. And I can't sneak a girl into the into your cubicle. So. I see. I'm always looking for a, a teddy bear. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's a, it's hard, you know, in a place where everybody's dog eat dog and and misery is the general uh, general consensus of emotion. Uh, it's hard to find anybody in a reciprocal uh, position. So maybe that's a big part of it. So it's like it's like the opposite things that are whatever's the opposite of reciprocal. Uh, <laughs> that's what the atmosphere is out here. So I think somebody running around trying to find that type of uh, return. It's, it's, it's like you know needle in the haystack kind of thing. So I should I should uh, get so frustrated when I when I the people that are unable to be that way. So what are you gonna do now? I gotta go sell a surfboard and go get breakfast. And then I need to go do laundry and, and uh, at the shelter. Yeah, take a shower, do laundry, things that uh, serve me and not other people. Uh, I can break out of that that cycle of uh, everybody first, but me. Then I think I'd be in better shape. It'll it'll happen. Maybe. I've been thinking about cutting my hair, kind of sort of. I saw Tom got his hair cut yesterday. Yeah. There was some guy cutting hair. Yeah. Well, I woke I, I crashed out uh, next to somebody um, yesterday morning and woke up and somebody had, a vendor had set up a booth and he was, I kept hearing somebody say, you, you, you need a haircut, you want a haircut? You want a haircut? And uh, I was thinking, is there free haircut? I might give it a haircut, but I don't think it was free. Well, it might have been. I saw Tom getting one. Yeah. Maybe free if you're unhoused. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. It'd be nice to, you know, cutting your hair sometimes symbolizes uh, a new beginning. So. Mm hmm And I, I'm ready for a new beginning. Just, you know, cutting the hair would be a good way to do it, though. Yeah. It would, you wouldn't have a choice but to uh, change your uh, approach. If you've been, you know, a certain way for a long time with the same hairstyle, you change your hairstyle, you get a chance to change your lifestyle. But I don't want to go, I don't like really short hair, but I might try to just get a uh, wire brush uh, and, and brush it out. I mean, it'll lose a lot of hair, but I'll keep a lot of hair. So. And then I, if the dreads aren't doing too good anyway, they're just thinning out. And I think they're like, to tell me something right. and you know cutting your hair you know if you have really long hair and you cut it that's a good way to deal with it's a good way to be home to, to learn humility and to to um, be able to lose something and it doesn't ruin your life you know what I mean because that, that's what I've dealt with a lot it's like something happens and I and something ain't a part of my life no more and then I just let it take me downhill um, so better just to Accept, you know, cuts, you know, cut something off. Accept that it's not going to change, like ruin your life, and, and move forward. So, because you never know, you can walk down the street, lose your arm, you can get paralyzed, you can do all these things that that um, could prevent you from, you know, normal activity. And then what are you going to do if you can't adjust or adapt? I knew a guy that was in Oklahoma that was in a wheelchair. He was probably 35, 40. And I said, you've been paralyzed. I said, why are you up first? I said, why are you always smiling? And he said, oh, because life is good. And, and he was a drinker, but that didn't really play a role. But he was, I asked him, I said, well, why, uh, why are you always smiling? I don't understand. He said, well, uh, I was smiling, uh, he said, an hour after they told me I was paralyzed. And I said, really? He said, yeah, because when they told me that, I mean, I already knew there's nothing I could do about it. So what am I going to do? Just be, be mopey, mopey? Or, Tin Man Eeyore or 
all those miserable, uh, the guy from Popeye never had money for a burger, Wembley. He can't be that, I mean, he said, he, he, he accepted it and, 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 and then life went on. And, I mean, that's amazing to me that somebody, they would just tell them paralyzed and then they go, oh yeah, yay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this by the, you know, by the, whatever they call them. Make the best out of it. And he was on the streets. He was at, at Pound or whatever. He was Native American, but he was still smiling. So, I mean, it's just, you know, life is a big, big lesson in uh, shit happening you don't have control over. You only have control over how you deal with it. So, you know, and some people deal with it healthy. Deal with it, not really healthy, but deal with it in the best way they can and it's not deteriorating. Some people deal with it. The way that could be really deteriorating. So you shouldn't judge people for their for how they process things. I mean, as long as they keep self-respect and respect others, however they process their, their stuff to get through, should be a, a you know understand and understood thing, and people should give them uh, that kind of leeway. But it just you know, but it's all about respect. So that means when you got a bunch of people like that's out here and they're not respecting everything and that's when there's a problem so it's just respect you know? and I, it took me a long time to realize that Harry Perry I would do that because I think it's just when you get older and you end up doing it a long time like he has you kind of really feel like uh, you're just nobody's there I mean I, he's had a lot of ups and downs but He's, he's, he's just made himself a, a novelty icon guy mm -hmm. for a long time, and, and, and the more that loses its uh, sparkle, I'm sure it's hard to deal with. Yeah. Harry Perry! I'm about to get out of here. Hey, have you, did you run today? Did you run today? Did you run today already? Yeah, you always run early. You always run early, I guess. Yeah. It starts your day, huh? <laughs> and then he goes to Gold's Gym and works out after that. He does? Yeah. I didn't know you went to Gold's. Oh yeah, you got to do resistance training. You're not, you're not, you're not a, uh, you're not a, 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 a big name until you're going to Gold's. Huh? I'm not trying to be a big name. I'm trying to be a, a big muscle. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> You're, you're only 42, right? Oh, 42 what? 42 times two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got with all these wires here? Oh, somebody, I was seeing which ones were worth the name. It's all, I mean, when you think about it, everything's garbage. I mean, if you want, if you want to believe it or not, everything gets thrown away. So, if everything gets thrown away, Eventually, you say it's all good. Yeah. Hey, Daisy. Hey, Super Squad. I literally dragged him here. Uh, has she walked on your back yet? Yeah. You know, our, one of our local celebrities. She's too good at it. She's too good at it. I wonder. How did she get so good at such a thing? <laughs> Perry Perry. I love that you uh, so make a point to do body work for, for people that that otherwise wouldn't be seen it. That's a real blessing, you know. And you don't realize it until it's in the moment and you're like, wow, this really helps me get some stuff out. You're definitely a healer. A lot of people, maybe not a lot of people don't like your approach. But <laughs> you know what they say. I don't want to say it, but that's them. <laughs> you mean? Love them. Love them. Yeah, love them. It's just as easy to say, go after yourself, as it is to say, go love yourself. Probably easier. And you could say it with the same intensity, and all of a sudden you change the me the meaning and the words, and you could still discharge. Like we need, like the shaming and stuff. These people just came out. The yuppies don't like getting woken up, and they don't understand. We get doused with hoses. Um, we get shine these bright lights. By city workers. Yeah, when you disrupt someone's sleep, it, it like it makes them get sick a lot of times. A lot of people will get like a little cold after they get woken up. 
I got woken up in the middle of the night by the cops and I immediately got sick the next day, you know? So it like, it, it messes with you. Waking people up is violent. And the yuppies need to understand that. Like they get pissed off. They don't want to get woken up. <clears throat> I'm waking them up at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? Nine o'clock in the morning, I think you're allowed to start making noise out here. I'm waking them up 45 minutes early and they're getting pissed. Imagine getting woken up at 12 and then two and then having all your stuff thrown away because you get, you've gotten woken up not once but twice. Or maybe you get woken up at 12 and two and then you get woken up again by the sprinklers at four. Yeah. Like <clears throat> these sprinklers are purposefully turned on Yeah, they do it. They in places control. that will spray what? concrete parking lot right. and sand that's true only parking like literally you'll watch it spraying into a parking lot and sand because pe they know that they, the people will sleep on the other end of that wall in the parking lot and that they will sleep in that area of the sand so they put sprinklers there and i'm like holding back tears because this is violence and we're expected to not say anything not do anything just go with a quick pro quo move and shut up what do you, how do you think they treat animals? Uh, no doubt. How do you think they treat animals? Like bees and animals. Sad. We are too violent. <laughs> we're too violent. We're, and we're also way too lovable and loving to keep living like this. Care Bears. We're too loving and lovable to keep living like this. I swear to you. Don't realize that it's violent. Somebody's got to say, make it. <laughs> All right, Chip, nice seeing you. Yeah, uh, looks like a nice Friday. Not too hot. Yeah, summer's winding down. Yeah, I don't think it would, I don't know if it ever winded up. I think each, each year, as it gets closer to the Olympics, um, it's gonna, the atmosphere is going to change. It's amazing. It's going to be like uh, to see how, you know, a person can be put on a facade and be a certain way because, like I say, you know, uh, grandma and grandpa are coming over for the holiday, so uh, we better put on a, a facade for that and just so they know they don't think we're ruining the family name. Well, LA is like a person, I guess. That, realizes somebody's coming over for holiday. So it's like they're putting on a facade, for, which is fine. I mean, they want the world to see a certain thing um, and they're able to make it that way. And it could benefit a lot of people. It could it could cause a lot of issues for a lot of people, but it's just a matter of, it's like, you know, what do we say? Um, if you're gonna go meet, you know, a relative and they're, they have a certain, you know, it's better to, to the, the loving way is to put on nice clothes and, 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 and take a shower and, and put yourself in a respectable way. Because it's a lasting impression. I mean, the last time Olympics were here was, what, 20, 40 years ago? No, that means probably another 40 years till they come again. So all the world's going to know is how L.A. is. And that's what their impression is going to be for the next 40 years. So I'm sure it was that way in 84 probably. Um, so I get it, you know. That's a good thing. Uh, hopefully I can get my housing and I, I, you know, I want to get in with the city somehow um, if not the county because you know they're going to need a lot of help and and I believe in I, I feel like you know working for working for where you live uh, is, is a really good position and you should be proud of that and I mean, even if I was you know cleaning the bathrooms or uh, taking out the trash I mean, it was it'd be for you know giving back to where I live, and that's that's a that's a good position. So I don't know. I'd like to try to get something going. Uh, once again, so the haircut would help because I don't think they let me have this tight haircut working for them. <laughs> but that's part of growing up, you know, and that's what I've been pushing, pushing, and pushing, putting off. So these, you know, but kids aren't getting any younger, so sometimes I don't, you know, you have to sacrifice certain things uh, it's, it's the kids turn you know to, to have a good memories of their dad or of, of that you know why are we here that won't, that won't be in their mindset 
they'll know that, you know. And they'll see somebody, hopefully they'll see somebody that went through a lot and, and pulled out of it, you know, because that's that's what's going to happen with them. They're going to have ups and downs and setbacks. And if, they, if their dad could get, go be homeless and on drugs and whatever and um, go to jail and all kinds of things, then, and, he, and he figured it out, then that'll give them a lot of inspiration. And that's what... That's who I hope to inspire the most is my kids because I mean that's how you live forever for sure is through your through your through your family. So if anybody wants to live forever, make sure you take care of your kids and your grandkids and, and protect them. That's 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 the proof. That's the definite for sure way to live forever. But yeah. All right. Well, looks like they're getting ready to move around. I better get up and see you guys next time. And, have a nice weekend. Okay, Chip. Have a good one. Right, nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Right. Uh, uh, get up and we can pull this
pulls all the crap out. Thank you.